Hello, I'm Peter Byers. I'm a medical geneticist at the University of Washington, and today we're going to talk about vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Where are we and where are we going? First, we'll start with the genetics of uh, vascular EDS. It's a results from pathogenic heterozygous alterations in col 3 a one a gene that's located on chromosome 2, which you can see designated on this uh, karyotype uh, by the red arrow. It's a heritable condition, and you can tell from the fact that it's uh, due to heterozygous alterations that it's dominantly inherited, although about 50% of people that we see are the first affected individuals. It's clinically heterogeneous and puts people at risk for complications that include arterial and bowel rupture and uterine rupture toward the end of pregnancy. Col3A1 encodes a change of type 3 collagen, which is a major component of arterial and bowel walls. And the clinical variability results, at least in part, from the allelic diversity and the nature of the genetic alterations. The, the, the arterial events can occur almost anywhere in the body. And the figure on the left from Odorich's uh, paper from uh, about 15 years ago gives a distribution of their study in Mayo. Uh, that's the general uh, uh, feeling that uh, everybody has. Complications in the uh, part below uh, can include both bowel and arterial rupture. And uh, the usual first events are arterial ruptures um, and less frequently are, are bowel ruptures. And people who've had a first arterial event are at risk for both arterial and bowel events and people who've had bowel ruptures are at risk for both. So there's no uh, preferred status. These complications introduce uh, a marked uh, decrease in longevity in individuals with this uh, uh, condition. And you can see in the upper right-hand figure that the curve for the U.S. population has a, a mean uh, a life expectancy in, in the late 70s to early 80s. And in vascular EDS, it's, it's shortened uh, to being now in about the 50s. So the first events are uncommon in childhood by about age 20, a quarter of people have had a complication and about half of the people by age 40 have had complications. The causes of death are uh, almost always arterial rupture, but organ ruptures such as the uterus, the heart, spleen, uh, and occasionally GI rupture uh, account for the rest. Type 3 collagen is a trimer. It's made up of three identical chains. Uh, and so it's a homotrimer. As a consequence, mutations in uh, half of the genes that are available, that is one out of the two uh, type 3 collagen genes, can result in uh, as many as um, seven-eighths of all of the molecules being made being abnormal. Uh, the chain has a long triple helical domain in it that extends for 1,029 amino acids. And in that figure on the bottom left, you can see that the glycine in every third position are represented by the, the green and are all packed in the middle. And any substitution for a glycine that's more uh, bulky will lead to disruption of the chain and problems in folding of the triple helical domain. The mutations uh, in type 3 collagen are usually uh, substitutions for glycine in the triple helical domain, and any of the glycines can be substituted, and they represent about two-thirds of the uh, mutations. Uh, this is a gene that has 51 exons, so splice site mutations are the next most common and account for about 25% of all mutations. Currently, about 4 to 5% have heterozygous nulls or haploinsufficient mutations um, that uh, lead to reduction in the amount of type 1, uh, type 3 procollagen made uh, to about half normal. And we think that they are probably more common because of the, um, uh, the less severe phenotype that uh, keeps them from ascertaining. There are two warm spots in the gene, the glycine at position 16, uh, substituted by serine in the triple helical domain, and a splice site mutation. Uh, IVS or intervenes intron 24 plus 1 G to A, and they account for, between the two of them, about 8% of all mutations. However, 
about 75% of mutations are private to the family, uh, even at this point. The mutations that affect uh, protein structure, um, which are the most common and will include substitutions for glycine and splice site mutations, which often lead to exon skipping, lead to intracellular storage. And you can see that in the image below taken by Karen Holbrook when we worked together. On the left is a control fibroblast. The rough end of plasma reticulum on the left uh, is of normal diameter in this huge area of uh, accumulation is uh, type 3 procollagen in the cell. So survival is affected by the type of mutation as I indicated. The nulls uh, have a much longer um, expected uh, survival um, and substitutions for glycine and splicing sites mutations are less. We can actually look at the substitutions for uh, glycine and recognize that the large bulky amino acids seen on the bottom, um, on the right in this slide, um, uh, can uh, also can be tiered in terms of effect. So the larger ones like arginine, valine, and aspartic acid are more severe, and the serine ones uh, are less severe, as are those substituted by cysteines. One of the major issues in, in this condition right from the beginning has been pregnancy. And until a few years ago, the prevailing advice was don't get pregnant because you will die. If you do get pregnant, terminate the pregnancy or you will die. Then if you don't terminate the pregnancy, please go see somebody else. Mitzi Murray in our group actually was interested in this problem and did a study that looked at uh, 526 women uh, with vascular EDS who were greater than 12 years of age. 243 of them had not been pregnant, 283 had been pregnant, and then looked at the survival curves. And you can see that uh, comparing the um, uh, survivals uh, and still living, that those curves essentially overlap. So uh, in spite of what people have been told, uh, pregnancy is not as uh, deleterious. It's true that there are complications uh, but pregnancy occurs at the time when complications would be occurring anyway. Um, and so uh, this probably is not such a hazard as was thought. Uh, there is a move to use cesarean section um, with early uh, uh, delivery uh, because vaginal delivery leads to tears uh, that can be quite severe. Uh, currently, there's no national or international consensus regarding medical treatment, except to try to maintain normal blood pressure. Uh, studies of soliprolol, uh, a, a beta blocker, were done in uh, France uh, with one uh, partially controlled uh, small trial and another natural history follow-up. And they thought that that uh, made a difference in, in um, treatment outcome or outcome. Um, however, it was clear that during the time of these studies that uh, the, the nature of care changed and it by itself may well have been an influence. Uh, surgery is um, essential usually in terms of ruptured bowel, but often with dissections, um, it may not be necessary and sometimes the better part of valor is actually to do nothing. Uh, surveillance is uh, uncertain, uh, often um, events occur in vessels that have neither an aneurysm or a dissection prior to that. And so it's not clear, except for looking at uh, places where they may be helpful, uh, what vessels and how often uh, things are can be expected. Pre-symptomatic intervention uh, using stenting or coiling. Coiling uh, is uh, certainly is uh, something that's used for treatment of carotid carotid cavernous sinus fistula, but the idea of stenting is really remains uncertain and untested at this point. And there is still this question about uh, surgical repair of asymptomatic aneurysms. Um, these are one of the, these are many of the areas that need a great deal of uh, work to be done. Uh, because of these uncertainties, uh, it's important to identify and create care teams where the patient is at the center uh, of this, the large yellow circle. The primary care physician is the primary contact, and cardiovascular surgeons, um, 
cardiologists, pulmonologists, internists, geneticists are all part of the loop. And one of the very important things is um, uh, communication. This is done because care is local. This is a relatively uncommon condition, perhaps one in 50,000 population. And so it often is thought that um, the physicians don't know what, uh, what to do. Um, and the main concern is that the events that occur in people with vascular EDS are the kinds of things that can occur anyway, bowel rupture, dissections. Um, uh, and so there is experience in the general population with those complications. It's just in the context of tissues that may be more friable and have more difficulty in uh, surgical care that it makes a difference. So care is local, communication is vital. It's important to cre create a plan for ordinary care. Remember people with vascular EDS have uh, the usual kinds of illnesses that everybody else does. And at the same time, create a plan for extraordinary care. That is what happens in the event of a, uh, of a major complication. And help comes from around the world. Um, uh, and we are, I think, much more aware of that given our current uh, addiction to uh, Zimians. There is some hope uh, for medical intervention uh, with the work from Hal Dietz, which suggests that uh, certain classes of medication can uh, bring, at least in experimental mice, a downward curve seen over here to one that has relatively few complications and, uh, and has a much longer survival. And we are very hopeful that these will come to fruition, although we have to remember that mice are neither men nor women. I'd like to thank everybody who's worked on this in our group. Melanie Pepin, genetic counselor, um, has been the major focus for aggregating all of the data and is the, has been the go-to person. Uh, Drew Leistritz, another genetic counselor, is now very much involved. Ulrika Schwartz um, did all the sequencing and it's emerged as the uh, pregnancy study. And Shreen Shahub, uh, vascular surgeon, has become a, a very important part of the team. Thank you. <laughs>